Hey everyone, it's Tim here. This is Urban Dunia and welcome back to Lahore and Lahore Explorer. Today we are coming to you from Anarkali Bazaar. This is Hamza that you would remember from the previous videos. Hello. Thanks so much for joining us again. And uh, we're going to be taking you on a bit of a tour around this area, which is sort of a shopping district. But first we're heading out of here and through Lohari Gate back into the walled city. Lohari Gate is named after the Lohars or blacksmiths who are said to have once plied their trade in this area. Every morning in this area this man comes along with his mashk, a bladder which is made from goat hide, to clean the city streets, a tradition that dates back centuries. Further along inside the Lohari Gate Bazaar is a produce market. And in the tiny streets near here, the crumbling Lal Haveli. But today we're starting here at, uh, I think it's called Papar Mandi Chok. Yeah, and um, watch out, there's a truck coming through it. <laughs> and uh, we're standing here amongst all of the dry fruit shops and everything. You can see all the dried figs hanging up behind us. And uh, we're going to visit the Nibin Mosque, which is a historic mosque of Lahore, but it's one that a lot of people don't know about. Have you been here before? I haven't. You haven't? Okay, so this is something that I got shown when I first came to Lahore. It's a mosque which is about 550 years old or a bit over that actually. It was, um, it was completed in 1460 and it's notable because it's actually usually mosques are built sort of up and made to look really grand above the street but this one is actually almost subterranean. It's 25 feet below the street level. Niven Mosque is one of those places that if you were to just walk down the street you might miss it completely because it's just sort of so hidden behind the facades here. And that's why I've included it in my new ebook, Lahore Explorer. Lahore Explorer is an accompaniment to this vlog series and also a companion guidebook to Pakistan Traveller for a more in-depth look at this city, which I absolutely love. You can buy it in separate chapters. You can buy one chapter per vlog that I've created, which will guide you around each different neighborhood that I've explored. Or you can buy it all together as one complete ebook. It's available by clicking the link in the video description below. And now we head out of Lohari Gate and to the modern arterial road, which encircles the walled city, Circular Road. We just come around the corner now of Circular Road to Urdu Bazaar and uh, yeah. Urdu Bazaar is basically like it's a market where you can buy books, um, notebooks, diaries, anything related to like stationary items, you can get it here. A lot of textbooks that are read across the schools in Pakistan, you can find them here, uh, no matter what subject or anything. And that's just like a lot of printing press exists around the area as well. So every printing that happens, that also happens in this like And it's huge. Like if you think you've seen a book story, I mean, think again, this is like, it's, it's huge. Yeah, it's, yeah exactly. I'm gonna learn about Feng Shui. I remember a whole bunch of classes at my school had to read this and for some reason my class didn't and I've never read it. Is it good? You can pick up board games and stationery here as well. Urdu Bazaar is directly opposite Mori Gate and further along still towards Pati Gate is Lahore's old fish market. Now back to where we started and the road that veers from Circular Road into the neighborhood of Anarkali is home to a gift market, garlands, hampers and bunting. And then Hamza pointed out a samosa shop that he used to go to in his childhood. A huge part of shopping experience in Anarkali is having like the snacks and some of the stalls that you would find here are very old, even older than the country itself. And then next door. So they have like the. Look at the Purana. 
Kostas, okay. So this is like a hundred year old shop and their speciality is basically Moti Chur. Like so when whoever comes here and like an articulate shop, this is like one of the snacks that they absolutely, at least I love to have. This is why you're here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whenever I come here, I make sure that I get like at least one along. So this is their Laddu, like the, one of the most, you know, famous items that they have. Uh. Cashew. How is it? Lovely. It's so good, right? Uh, buttery, creamy, but savory at the same time. So the gentleman who is running this shop here, he has just very kindly refused to take payment from us. Um, honestly, that was delicious and this has been the best experience. I feel guilty. <laughs> But no, honestly, so kind. This market here is, I think it's just called Pan Market, is that right? Pan Bazaar. Yes. And um, it's, I mean, Pan, you would remember in one of the earlier videos with uh, with another friend, I tried Pan on the street at Party Gate. And so basically this is the street in Lahore where all of those places source their Pan, their beetle leaf from. And as well as that, a lot of um, cosmetics here which are imported from India, I believe, is that correct? Yeah, yeah like India and a lot of like cosmetic models. Yeah. They import uh, cosmetic like, products from there and sell it in this market a lot. So yeah, beetle, eh? This is like beetle. the big uh, actual oh, that's the nut. Full one. Okay. This is the beetle nut, and they crash it into this. Yeah. And then it turns into a pond. And they have all these other ingredients that they put in the pond to make it like a bit sweet. Okay. We haven't stopped eating basically, but we're here for chole pature, which is? It's basically like a fried bread uh, that's made out of some pulses and wheat and uh, it's eaten with like chickpeas, with pickles and uh, This is like I mean, such a Punjabi it was time to delve into Anarkali. So we've just turned into new Anarkali Bazaar. Yeah. And uh, Anarkali is basically like a hot spot for locals to come and shop. Okay. You've got like tons of clothing brands, local clothing brands, and um, women's dressing, you've got shoes, and you've got like occasional stalls, the food stalls where you can like have snacks while you're shopping or um, basically like it's a it's a pre-think version of yeah. Uh, malls. Yeah, it's like an outdoor shopping yeah. mall in a yeah. way. I think like this strip has largely been superseded by a lot of malls out in the suburbs, like modern shopping malls out in the suburbs, but yeah. I mean it's still super busy. But a lot of people, like yeah. especially locals, still prefer to come here and you find a lot of like um, local dickbacks over here which yeah. are, which you can't yeah. find in a mall so it's got like its own soul you can say. Yeah, it's actually, I, um, I mean I remember when I was learning Urdu that in a lot of my Urdu readers um, there were a lot of stories about Anarkali Bazaar yeah. and like you know it's, visitors it's, to Lahore that would come here and they'd be brought here by their you know local friends and everything yeah yeah, yeah. It, it, and it's such a beautiful place to just like have a stroll you find so many people so many different um, different people coming here shopping yeah. so it's, it's a real it's like no pun intended but it's a big part of the fabric of Lahore I would it say is, yeah <laughs> Anarkali has long been a very diverse neighborhood, and at the very entrance is the Lohari Gate Church. The name Anarkali means pomegranate blossom, but this neighborhood was named after a woman that was said to have been a love interest of the Mughal Emperor Jahangir before he ascended to the throne. Today, Anarkali is divided into new and old Anarkali. 
We'll be looking at Old and Arkali as part of the Mall Road episode later. You can get any type of clothing, saris, traditional Pakistani clothing, modern casual, western style suits, school uniforms, accessories like watches, shoes, jewelry, it's all here. There are also a few interesting handicraft and art shops too. The main street of New Anarkali is unofficially pedestrianized. It's open to vehicles, but they vie for space with the throngs of foot traffic. And mobile vendors who keep the shoppers sustained on a steady diet of street snacks. And then, down a side street, the tomb of Sultan Qutbuddin Aybak, the founder of the Delhi Sultanate in 1206, which made him one of the first Muslim rulers of what is now India. When you come to visit the tomb of Sultan Qutbuddin Aybak, make sure that you look or stand in the garden and then look across the road above the roof lines where you can see the top of an old Hindu temple. It's long since passed out of service, but the architecture there remains and is protected. I've mentioned all of this in my book, Pakistan Traveler. It's the world's most comprehensive travel guidebook to Pakistan. It's available as an e-book or also as a paperback. And you can get your copy today by clicking the link in the video description below. And now back to the main bazaar. This guy was getting a suit fitted for his upcoming wedding and the shop owner invited me to try on a pagri or a turban. Of course I did. <laughs> Look right to what the wedding collection for the jewelry. You can also find old style perfumeries here, and even wig shops. We might have left the walled city, but the spirit of old Lahore still permeates this area, with hidden gems down every laneway. We're now heading out of the main part of New Anarkali and into the Nila Gumbad neighborhood. This is where a lot of the more primary fabric work is taken care of. Stitching, and dyeing, and so on. None of this would be possible without a steady stream of snacks, meals, and of course chai. Did I mention that Lahore's greatest passion is food? We're here at uh, Dahi Bale shop, which is like, again, one of the oldest shops here. It's since 1950 or somewhere close. Uh, and again, like we're going to have one more thing that is a part of like a very old cuisine. Yeah, I, I think it's time to indulge. Dahi Bale is gram flour dumplings served in tangy yogurt, topped with fried onions, spices and tamarind chutney. It's a really good one actually. Mm. So this is like during Ramadan, especially in the hot months, this is one of the things that is normally on the iftar tables to break up fast with. It's sort of cooling, soothing, filling. And then right next door to taste a dessert. Definitely one of those moments where I wondered where it had been all my life up to that point. Sure, okay. Oh my god. Okay. It's like Pakistani tres leches cake. Yeah, yeah. It's that is amazing. Oh, and I'm dropping it. I think and finally, behind the snack shops, the tomb of Sheikh Abdul Razak, a mystic who came from the holy city of Mecca to Lahore in the 16th century. 
The area's name, Nila Gumbad, means blue dome and takes its name from this mausoleum. And it is here at Nila Gumbad that we are finishing today's video. Thank you so much for watching and thanks so much to Hamza for coming along. Oh, you're welcome and I had a great time. You <laughs> showed me so many places around here as well actually, so really thanks for coming. And um, don't forget that we will be back again next week with another episode of Lahore Explorer. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and we'll see you soon. Bye. Explore Pakistan and Lahore like a local with my books. Pakistan Traveler is the world's most comprehensive travel guidebook for Pakistan and Lahore Explorer is the world's most comprehensive travel guidebook for Lahore. Pakistan Traveler comes as an ebook or paperback and Lahore Explorer comes as an ebook, but you can get it in separate chapters or all together in one ebook. Get your copies today by clicking the link in the video description below. And that's not all, there is so much more to discover. Check out some of my other vlogs and if you like what you see make sure that you like, subscribe and hit that bell icon so that you can be part of my dunya.